this is a review for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Ultimate Collection Volume 1. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is an interesting franchise. To be honest, its premise is pretty ridiculous. Well, at least if you say it out loud. Four turtles get mutated by Green News, learn ninjutsu, and are trained by a mutated rat called Splinter who the turtles consider their master as well as their father. However, I would be lying if I said that TMNT wasn't one of my absolute favorite team of characters. If you can get past this premise, then I think you should be able to enjoy TMNT. The franchise has founded a very cartoonish series in the 80s, three movies, a live action show, and a series in 2003, and will produce yet another series later this year, if my memory serves. But all of this originated from a comic series that debuted in 1984. The various incarnations of the Turtles differ in quality, varying from great and character-driven like the 2003 series, to idiotic or non-engaging like The Next Mutation or the third Ninja Turtles movie. Hands down, my favorite version of TMNT is the 2003 series. This may probably be because this is the version of the Turtles I grew up with, but even watching it now, the series has great character moments and some truly spectacular animation. This series was more firmly based on the original comics in the 80s series, which, to be honest, I've never really been able to get into the 80s series. It's a bit too silly for me and not not as enter entertaining it's it's very it's too 80s for me which is weird because I don't mind watching the original Transformers show anyway um, the I've heard from some that the original comics are really dark and edgy but I don't think that's really the case if it weren't for some really cool ninja action violence and a few swear words it would it could probably be enjoyed and read by kids. Many of the stories from the original comics were directly adapted for episodes of the 2003 series. I first heard about the comics about three years ago, so I looked them up on Amazon, but the only collection with the first several issues was out of print and thus insanely expensive. About a few months ago, they announced or pre-ordered the TMNT Ultimate Collection in Volume 1 in hardcover. It was like my prayers were answered, and it looked like the book was in high demand when I ordered it. Like it said, like a uh, few left in stock and order soon. This collection is a jumbo-sized hardcover from IDW, which in the hard in the hardcover's copyright information is all is the logos of both IDW and Nickelodeon. Since now uh, Peter Laird, I think he sold. Um, he sold the TMNT franchise to Nickelodeon, but there's a new volume of comics that's being produced, which Kevin Eastman is working on. So, um, so I guess Nickelodeon owning TMNT isn't too big a deal. It's just that, uh, T uh Nickelodeon's shows lately have not been very good. I didn't like iCarly, and that's pretty much the only type of show they, sh they put on Nickelodeon right now. And the animated shows are not really as good as cl their classics like uh, Invader Zim or the first three seasons of Spongebob. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. The page size, the actual size of the pages, is, um, is around the same as the DC Absolute Editions. Maybe a little smaller, but they're pretty big. The, this, collec this collection includes the first seven issues and the Raphael one-shot. So as you can imagine, when I received it, I was pretty psyched to read it. This is an amazing reprint collection. The artwork in the book itself is top-notch and is the best part about it. The spectacular art is made even more so because it's well printed on giant pages, which is pretty effective in some awesome double-page spreads that they have here. Um, Ke uh, Eastman and Laird, they love to draw double page splashes and with pages so big you can the action just looks immense uh, after each issue there are some annotations by Kevin Eastman and occasionally a few annotations from Peter Laird Eastman in each annotation explains what went into making each issue and how they decided to structure the issue 
The stories covered in this collection are The Origin of the Turtles, of course, which has a reference to Daredevil, by the way, The Attack of the Mousers, The Search for Splinter, and finally the Turtles travel to the Triceraton homeworld and have to find their way back home. The stories themselves in the book are not that great. The main drawback to these early stories is that the turtles themselves are not fully developed yet. I would say that the most developed is Raphael because he acts pretty much the same as in the rest of his incarnations. And I would say the least developed is Donatello. Since he doesn't really get to do that much. Well yeah, he does help April with the mousers and he does like pretty much immediately know how to drive an alien car later on in the Triceraton issues. But he is my favorite turtle of the four, and I just wish he had more to do. I guess Mikey isn't used much either, but in the 2003 series he is the least developed of the four, even though he wins the Battle Nexus tournament. So I guess I'm just used to him mostly being comic relief or providing funny pop culture references. In the comics, all their, masks, all their masks are red. I personally re prefer the individual colors since it represents their individual personalities, but I have absolutely no problems with all red masks. It, it does look pretty cool, I just slightly prefer the colors. I am sure that Eastman and Laird improve later on in the series, so the slight lack of characterization in my opinion doesn't hurt this collection for me too much. I think I made the stories out to be less good than they are, but I just felt that more fleshed out characters would have gone a long way to improving these, these issues. Like Baxter Stockman, he's a pretty stereotypical mad scientist. April doesn't really get to do anything interesting except in, go in a car chase. And um, they don't have as much witty banter, the turtles themselves don't have as much witty banter with each other as they do in the 2003 series. But for Turtles fans, this is a fantastic reprint, and it, it's a must-own. Turtles fans have to get this. Well, if they're too much into the original 80s series, then they might not like this because they didn't like the 2003 series because it was darker and not funny or comedic. Um, so yeah, so this is a fantastic reprint. But for casual fans, this book is a bit pricey because each is like 30 to 40 bucks a pop. I, I did not regret it. Um, I really enjoyed this collection for the amount of supplemental material, you know, the Kevin Eastman annotations, and the absolute beauty of the artwork. My next Turtles review will be the first season of the 2003 series, since I did happen to mention it a lot in this review. Just because I love it so much. Um, if you happen to purchase the TMNT Ultimate Collection Volume 1, I would say it was worth every penny. I can't wait to get the second hardcover. And again, the artwork is gorgeous. That's the main selling point of this book. The artwork is gorgeous. So yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say on the first hardcover collection. Um, I feel really fortunate to have been able to get it because uh, before the la the last TMNT collection was out of print, like I said. So I just feel it just feels good having all these issues collected in hardcover. The next collection I think is coming around in February, and uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what the next TMNT series is going to be on Nickelodeon. I know it's CGI, and uh, that's pretty much all I know about it at this point. But I think it's going to be good. If Nickelodeon doesn't screw up. But yeah, Turtle Power!